All right, here we go. All right. Well, here we are, live again, and it's Friday, uh, April the 16th. So uh, great to see you guys, uh, Sasha. Nice to see you, and Rita. Super to see you here, Bernd. Uh, this is great. Um, I believe our good friend Stefan might even be checking in on us uh, this evening, uh, afternoon here, but evening there. Uh, but anyhow, we'll see if he shows. Um, looking forward to this today. Um, this is a really fun subject because uh, it's it's about how to simplify uh, and how to sort of get started in a painting. And uh, looking at a painting in kind of an abstract way, if that makes any sense, uh, because we tend to get really hung up on details and, you know, get into a whole lot of information before we really need to. So it's sort of holding off on the information till uh, a little further into the painting. Nice to see you, Andrew and Heike. Nice to see you and Angelica. Great to see you. Um, I know that Stefan's not broadcasting today, so um, maybe we'll see some of his crowd here too. So this is really nice. Um, I wish I could do all of this in German. I know Angelica suggested maybe we get subtitles in German and maybe there's a way of figuring that out. Um, anyhow, um, welcome. Thank you for showing up. I'm going to show you uh, the image that I want to, to paint. Ah, ah, Stefan's watching. All right. Welcome, Stefan. Um, so uh, I've picked an image, not the one that you've seen on Facebook, um, another image. It's a simpler image. Uh, but I'm hoping that it'll get the idea across. Um, I'm going to show you the image in a couple of different ways. Uh, one is, well, I'll just go to it. Here we go. Uh, here we go. All right. So you can see this. Uh, the one on the right is the actual photograph, uh, which it took in in Venice, I think it was a Biennale we were there for, and there was this old room that was just like really kind of broken down and um, kind of cool. I, I love the colors. Uh, it's all sort of muted, earthy colors, yellow, and it's not like a sink that you want to use unless you're an artist. Um, <laughs> and uh, the light coming through the window was really nice the way it was spilling down the wall and what i've done is i've taken that image into procreate and the one on the left is just me playing with color a little bit to try and find out what kind of colors i might need on my palette and uh this is always it's just all prep work really and it's important to have a sense of composition and the colors you want to use and the feeling you want to get. Um, and another thing that I do, and I'll just show you this. Whoop, wrong way. There we go. Um, this is a black and white version with maybe some grays in it. So you can see how it really breaks down into some very simple graphic uh colors here um sasha color reduced to eight to 16 colors on the left it might be oh, i'm just counting them on my palette let's see two in fact i'll take you to my palette how's that so here's my palette and it probably makes sense to run through the colors too so i'll show you what i'm working with nice to see you Bernd. Um, and Stelio, great to see you too. So the colors I've got going here, I've got a, uh, it's cad yellow light. I think that's what that is. Cadmium lemon. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. 
It's a Windsor Newton. And then I've got an old Holland Yellow Ochre. I've got an old Holland Alizarin Crimson. Cobalt Blue, which is the cool blue. Ultramarine Light Extra, uh, which is, um, well, it's the warmer blue compared to Cobalt. And uh, Transparent Oxide Red, and I've got the Rublev, which is a Cypress Burnt Umber, the, and which is really kind of a, a brown kind of mucky color, which you can see on the palette uh, here. It's kind of hard to see through this camera. It's a webcam, so it's not really brilliant. But anyhow, that's a little warmer. This is a little cooler because I brought blue into it. Um, and what I've done is I've taken this as a base color, this Rublev, uh, and I've added a lot of yellow ochre into it and brought it up into this kind of color here. I've also added cobalt blue into that, if I recall to give me this kind of yellow. And these are all really sort of earthy, mucky kind of colors. Uh, and it's just really fun to work with something that again is harmonized because this Rublevin is in all of these colors and I'm working with yellows, a little bit of uh, a Viridian. I forgot to mention the Viridian. I've got a Viridian over here. Tiny bit of that into this one here. But again, it still has some of the yellows that I've used all the way through. And I'm um, trying to keep it harmonious and keep it looking somewhat like the image that I want to paint. I'm going to go back to this uh, scene here, which shows you... Uh, what I'm working with. So you can see on the right hand side, I've divided it into thirds. And this is a nice compositional technique. And you can do this really easy um, by just using your phone app on your iPhone. When you size something or you're going to crop something, these lines show up automatically. And then what I do is I take a screenshot when those lines show up. And that gives me kind of a grid to follow, if that makes any sense. And I can use that as a, a way of uh, showing, you know, where these items or these elements sit within the, the painting. Um, I do that a fair bit. And so I divide my, my painting down into thirds like this as well. And you'll see that in a moment when I switch my camera over. And on the left, um, I've got, uh, again, these colors that I've sort of taken from Procreate and just kind of, you know, punch them in to see what that looks like. And I'm going to try and keep this fairly simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. Great to see you, Jerry. And Isabel, great to see you, too. Uh, so nice to have people checking in. You know, on a Friday afternoon, I'd be here all alone talking to myself which I would do anyhow. Uh, Stefan can tell you I'm good at talking to myself. Um, and uh, so is he. Uh, but it's nice to have people show. And all right. So what I'm going to do is try and show you a process, uh, an approach to starting your painting, getting the big shapes down, and then building from those large shapes uh, into smaller ones. And let me just take you to my canvas now. Just switch up my camera here. And you can see what we've got going here. All right. So as you can see, it's the old leftover paint program. Um, I've taken leftover paint from other things I've been working on and just put it on a board. And these lines that you see right here, actually, I want to show you a technique for getting lines like this if you decide you want to work this way. Um, I use a straight edge. And I can't remember if I got this here or if I got this in Vienna. Um, let's see. Probably here. It's a, it's a straight edge that looks like this. It's, it's, it's just something you would use for you know, plastering walls, or in my case, you can see I've got leftover paint all over it. So I use it when I'm painting. 
So when I want to make a straight line, um, all I do is I, I take a little bit of paint, and I'll just give you an example. I put my straight line down, and um, I just paint along the edge of it. And you can see what that does. It gives me a straight line. You know, it's just really quick and easy. Um, I measure these areas out so they're proper thirds. This is 12 inches by inches, uh, 12 by 12 inches. So, you know, I've got four inch segments uh, in here and I can use that as a guide. And if you don't like where you put something down, well, you know, it's just paint so I can get rid of it. These are still wet. So when I paint over all of these things, they'll disappear. Uh, all right. So you've seen the image I want to paint from. I think there's a way of getting this up here. What I won't, I'm going to just try this. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, well, that doesn't work so well. I want to show you the image. And also back camera at the same time. I don't know. One of these days I'll actually be able to figure this thing out. Huh. Okay. Well, that's sort of it. There we go. Um, it's funny when you're looking at it. From, I'm looking at it on my iPad Pro, and I can see that the image um, it, that I'm painting from is kind of like overlapping this thing here. So I'll figure that out someday. Maybe I just need to move that over. Never thought of doing that. Of course, if I do that, everything may collapse. Everything's held together with thread around here. So I don't won't take any chances. All right. And at some point, I may just get rid of this image so it's not, you know, in the way of you. Um, so first thing I want to do is quickly draw where the items are that, that I want to be painting. And I want to separate out the light from the dark. So if I really want to do this properly, what I need to do is have a look at my black and white image here. And this is very dramatic. I mean, it's really grays and, and you know, some white and, and, and uh, mostly black and, and grays. Um, but this is like my guide to give me a sense of where I need to have my light and shadow and make the transitions. So I'm just going to quickly draw in where the light and shadow meet. And again, it's fairly dramatic. I don't have to be super tight with this. I'm just going to quickly place where I think these things should be. And of course, I'm using my uh, guides here with my reference. And I can see I've got my this image on another iPad in front of me. So I'm painting from that image on an iPad. And so I can kind of follow that along. And if, when I want to put this sink in, it's going to go approximately here. And over here. And of course, all this can change. I can make adjustments as I need to as I go along. I want to get my perspective working. I can, that would be good. I see the sink comes out a little further this way. And what I like about painting into color is that there's texture and there's color underneath, which one will add a little more life to the painting. Uh, I'm really liking painting this way. It just feels Somehow or other, well, there's paint already on the board, so I don't need to worry about putting fresh paint over a white surface. It's already got paint on it, and all I need to do is work with the colors that are there and try and make something that looks nice using those colors that are there. Very quickly, just dropping in where this window frame goes. Use a little more paint on my brush. There we go. 
and I'm, I'm letting, you know, the texture come through here, but a dark area here. And again, I want to keep this really, really simple. Uh, keep my darks where they go. I can go back and adjust these things where I need to. So there's a dark area there. There's a little bit of a dark area in the corner here. Again, really trying to keep it simple at this stage. Um, when I look at the black and the white of this, there's sort of a line that comes away from here. But when I look at the color version, it's not as dramatic in the color version. So I'm going to go back to the color version and show you what I mean. Uh, really, the darks where they come away from the side here. Well, maybe I'll just go back to that black away to show you what I mean. You can see when I flip back and forth how so much disappears. There's like this angle that comes out the, into the light here, this area here, and then everything else is kind of dark. In reality, uh, when I look at uh, this here, I can see a lot more of the same. So, you know, this is something you want to interpret. Um, you don't have to follow exactly what you see in your black and white because that would just end up looking like a black and white image. Um, okay, so at this stage, instead of working with this tiny little brush, I'm going to get out something a little bigger and drop in some larger shapes. This is a brush that I got in Vienna, which I just love. Um, I'm drawing with a, so far I'm just drawing with a, a brush, uh, Rhonda. In, in fact, now that was done with a brush as well, if you were checking in a little earlier. Okay, so I'm just gonna put these darks in as I see them. And I like this brush because I can get some nice sharp edges where I want to, like say here where, sharper edges towards uh, where the light. Um, so if the light source is here and falling here, that's going to have a sharp edge. But as it comes down to this point here, there's more ambient light that gets in. So I can have a quite a sharp edge here. And as it comes down, it gets softer in there. I just want to think about that. And again, I'm looking at big shapes. Uh, this is all in shadow here. I'm just going to put this in lightly. So I want to get a, make sure I remember where the sink starts and ends. And just really drop lots of dark color in down here. Again, big shapes. I really want to think about these big shapes that make this composition interesting. When you're painting on location, or even from reference, if you squint at the image, you see the large values. So you figure out where the darkest darks are and the lightest lights and the largest shapes start with that so what I have here now is really just some big shapes which if you consider it graphically I'm getting a lot of shine on that by the way let's see if I can turn this light so that it's less glare because that's just really a little aggravating. Still getting a lot of shine. It's not from this light. It's from the other one. So let's just try moving this one away. There we go. That's better. All right. Okay. So I'm thinking about these large graphic shapes here, almost abstracted, if that makes any sense. Um, and you'll notice that this shape here takes up roughly one half or maybe just a little bit more than one half of the uh, overall canvas and this is canvas board by the way and then i have these shapes that break in here from the top which if you were to analyze this just as far as the amount of area that's covered i would have approximately 
between half and a third of the overall uh, painting covered with a darker uh, uh, value. And so I want to be thinking kind of in a graphic way that way. Um, is that an exciting, is that an interesting shape uh, to, to make a painting out of? And of course, when I put the darks into the sink itself, that's going to help bring up the percentage of darkness within this image. So, and the darkness is going to accentuate the light that happens over here. And I'm just drawing this in. I love, if you look at Andrew Wyeth's work, this is the kind of image that he would do so well. And I can afford to go in fairly dark in this area. It really is the focal area. I mean, it's the sink that's the most important part of this whole image. Although the way light spills down through this, I think is very beautiful. And all this, you know, muck and so on up here, I hardly notice it really. I'm, it's just um, background at this stage. The neat thing is that if I want to, like I could actually, at this stage, if I wanted, for example, to bring some light out of an area or some color out, I can go into it like that with a, a, a brush that has some mineral spirits on it. And it makes that lighter and brighter. I don't really actually want to do that. So I'll just go over that again. So one of the things I love about oil is that it is very forgiving and you can really build layers when you want to and you can allow transparent areas and opaque areas and they do this interesting dance between each other and having a little bit of the subtle color that comes out underneath so again, I'm just thinking about the big shapes right now. I really don't want to get hung up on all the little detail things. They'll come later. And if you get these shapes working, uh, you've got kind of something to work against or two, then everything else gets a little bit, well, it makes more sense because you know where things are supposed to be. And you can see you've got a very strong line happening here. I can soften those lines down later. It's not a problem. Just going to, again, still going to the drawing stage of this. And I'm working with fairly thin uh, darks here. Typically in the tradition, you work from thin to thick. So fat over lean. You've probably heard that plenty. I just want to get my drawing in here and i really don't even have to put all this drawing in i could do this with another brush with the lights um, which kind of works too all right i'm going to get a little smaller brush and get into a little bit more of the light that i see happening i'm going to grab uh well Sort of a, it's, I'm going to call it a half tone. It's not really actually, it's, it's in the light. It's a color that's in the light. Um, and I'm just going to try and figure out where my light is hitting in this scene. I want to draw this out here and get the sense of light that's going on. This is got a little bit of radiant in it. In it. It's a, a kind of a green light. It's cool light, warm shadow, just if you're wondering about these lighting conditions. I'm getting rid of all that texture there. But in the process of doing that, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe I can use that texture later, right? So um, I don't need to worry about covering it up because I can go back in and with a palette knife over top of that, it's going to pick up some of this texture. Sometimes it's really tempting 
just to leave little colors showing through if it makes sense and sometimes i do you know this is kind of a gray mucky kind of color happening here all right i'm gonna go in with uh, another brush here and gotta just find it everything i need except the brush i need oh, maybe that's it okay so this is this kind of sword-like brush. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the dark color. And I want to put a little bit of detail right in here. Again, when I say detail, I'm just, it's just giving me the rough idea where things are. I can just refine things a little. This, this brush comes to a really nice point. I really like using it. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a little bit of a, it's a slightly uh, warmer color, which is interesting because it's cool light. And this is a cool yellow. There's lots of ochre in it. But I want to create a transition in these colors so that it's not like one boring color all the way down. As light follows, follows through this, um, you can see the transition of values. And that's really important to think about. Squinting at it, I can see how the, the values drop down. They become kind of a gray green, which is what I'm going to put in down here. I just want to get a sense of the colors that might happen in here. And to go back into my green a little bit and just throw that in. And you can see I'm just scrubbing it around. I don't really care too much about getting into the details. There's some nice stuff that happens that comes through. And I like to leave that when I can. Towards the bottom here, it really gets into... Uh-huh. I realize there's a color I don't have out here. And... Uh, Stefan will be proud of me if I can find this because it's a phthalo. Thought I had some here. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing it. I resist using phthalo because it wrecks all my brushes. I'm pretty sure I had some here. Is that it? Yep, got it. So I'm going to use the tiniest touch of phthalo and it's such a strong color you don't need much of it I have to be really careful with it it ruins your brushes just so you know and as soon as I put this in here you can see it doesn't need very much of it as it transitions into the shadow area um it's <laughs> stefan and i argue about warm and cool colors i call this a warm color and because it's a little warmer and a little more intense it helps bring this shadow a little bit into the foreground all right nice to see you petra Okay, now I want to go into the yellows that I see in the wall uh, behind the sink. So I'm just going to kind of grab a, a gray yellow, if that makes any sense. And just, it's a little too strong. I need to lighten that. So I'm just going to go into a little lighter color there. And overall, when I'm done, I want to feel like there's some color harmony in the whole thing and like it holds together that way. Um, because of the subject, it really lends itself well to all these textures. 
and you can paint it in a very loose way. Sometimes these paintings just paint themselves, if that makes any sense. You know, it's what you leave that makes it interesting. And that's where all those colors underneath really help because it gives me an opportunity of keeping it loose and fresh. And if I want to get back to some of that color, I can just take it away if I want to. Again, with a bit of medium, I kind of like the way that warm area happens right there and I'm, I'm tempted to leave it. So I will for now. Nobody knows, you know, you're looking at the reference, so you know, but when you do a painting, nobody knows what your reference was. Uh, people don't hang their reference beside their paintings in the gallery. So it's just something to think about. Now, when I look at this on the screen, it's showing like it's very warm, but in reality, it's not that warm. So I'm going to try and turn this light away again. Actually, I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to adjust the light. There we go. That's a little more like it. It's a little cooler. It's showing very warm on the screen, but in reality, it's, it's cooler as I see it here in real life. So it's funny how that works. Okay. Now I want to make sure I get my values working properly. It looks like I could bring that down a little further in, in uh, value. So I'm going to bring more gray. Again, a tiniest touch of phthalo into it. Really, I'm careful with it, that stuff. It's dangerous. I want to bring this down in value so it's a little more dramatic when the light is dropping away. And it's these kinds of colors that make something, and these values that make something look believable. Getting these right, it's important. And it goes really into shadow here. And I can again bring a bit of phthalo into that because it's transitioning into the shadow. And this is a stage where it's really fun because you can create a sense of atmosphere. I'm putting more into the painting than there is in the photograph that I'm working from. And that's because we, we can do that. We can sort of show more than what is really there and enhance the things we want. There's usually less information in the shadows than there is in light. So, you know, keep your shadow areas simple. Um, you can have changes of color, but they should be neutral and, and not terribly exciting. So uh, keep your color in the lights. That's where they belong, the most intense color, typically. There are some interesting exercises that you can do where you, you put all the colors into your shadow, but then you have to keep the lights really neutral. So uh, that's, that's a fun one to try if you want sometime. Now all I'm doing is just taking this area here and softening it down. I need a drier brush than this. I'm going to just wipe this brush so that there's less fluid in it because I want it to soften here in this area and just let the textures that I see underneath work their way into the shadow. I'm kind of scrubbing in a half tone, if that makes any sense. I like the way these colors underneath are popping through. It's far more interesting than what's, what's in the photo, in my opinion. And you'll notice I'm sort of staying away from the, the main subject here. Uh, it's not out of fear. It's because I want to get everything else around it working 
before I commit to dealing with the details over here. And that's something, you know, when you're doing a portrait or you're painting a scene outdoors even, um, really think about the atmosphere and, you know, what's going on around the subject. So, so many times I know with my students, you know, they paint a beautiful portrait of someone and then they don't know what to put behind it. It's like, I, I don't know how to fill in the background. Well, put the background in first and let the subject be painted over top of, of that background. It's because of course they are over top of that background. You know, they're in front of it. So, all right, I'm going to go into a little bit more color up top because there is more up here. And you can see I'm just letting the, the brush do all the work here. When I say I'm letting the brush do all the work, I still have to move it. But it leaves its own little textures, all those little hairs, those bristles or whatever, are just doing their own thing. And I really am trying to go for the essence of what is here. Just exploring and finding my way through this image and having fun with it. Like it just, you know, playing. If there's something I don't like, I just wipe it out, right? I've shown that in the past. Now, the uh, lightest area is the area that's coming directly from the window. I'm not going to use a straight white because if I do that, well, it you, we don't see straight white anywhere. But it is a cool light, and I'm going to bring a viridian into that, just a tiniest bit. You can't see what I'm mixing here. Um, maybe I can do that. Uh, let's see. Okay, I can do that. There we go. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of this. It's white with a bit of that viridian that I had out before. And by the way, this is a combination of permelba white and the old Holland zinc and titanium mix. And this is, I'm hoping that when I put this in, the, the texture of the um, canvas underneath will help accent what's going on here. Just let the color be broken through here. You can see how the canvas works against this. Um, a little more paint will help. And I'm letting some of the color that's underneath show through. That's okay. Got a shaky hand, but maybe that helps. It's a shaky old building. Okay, some nice crisp lines right there. So there's sort of two areas of interest at this, of course, um, but the windows are interesting to look at too. I'm going to bring in a little bit of another color just to break up some of the light that I see coming in there and let a little mix of color happen. That kind of helps it too. Okay, I'm going to go for the other side, the window over here. I really love the random textures that come up when you do this. And if I didn't have paint down underneath it, then I wouldn't see any of these textures. Of course, you work on a super smooth, flat surface, uh, you don't get these kind of things that happen. And sometimes they, they don't work. Uh, and if they don't, then you go over it again and 
you know, soften things out. We've got a couple of sharp edges. I mean, this really could be um, like a, well, an old, old window. So. Um, Sasha, yeah, I, I do like working with a combination of transparent and opaque colors, trying to keep the opaque more towards the objects that are light. Uh, but the transparent color gives you a different effect. It gives you a sense of depth. And if you think about how light works on a, uh, a layer of oil, if it's transparent, what happens is the light actually is hitting the color, passing through the color, and bouncing off whatever's underneath. So that's with a transparent color. Whereas if you have opaque color, um, it just hits the surface and comes off of that. So there's an additional sense of depth when you use transparent color that you don't get uh, if everything is opaque. So if you look at Rembrandt's work, well, he's the prime example of a guy who could do both really well. There's a lot of transparency in Rembrandt's shadows. So right now, I'm just, it's not the right color. I'm just drawing back into it a little to correct my, my drawing before I paint anything on top. I could really leave a lot of that there. Uh, it's not there in the image. Um, but because it's interesting, um, I kind of like the way it looks all dirty. Um, I could take, just for fun, I'm going to try this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a tra somewhat transparent color over top of that. Now, the thing is, when you have white in a color, it's less transparent right? So I need to add a little bit of oil into that. And I'm just going to put a very light, transparent layer over top of that, just to see what it looks like, because I might end up keeping that makes it feel more like tile. I don't know. It, it, this is, you know, this is the play part of the painting. It's like a porcelain and I don't know if it works or not. I don't know. I, I'm going to leave it for now. And if I want to make it more opaque later, I can. Uh, okay. Now I want to make sure that I've got my shadows working and I'm just going to go there. There's a shadow that comes across this area here. And again, cool light, warm shadow, something to be thinking about. It's a shadow that comes in here. It's a little darker than that in the photo that I have. I'm still trying to think in, in big shapes, if that makes any sense. Um, looking at the larger, shapes overall. I'm going to go into the background texture here a little more. It gets a little lighter where it's towards the window. I'm going to try this. Oh, I like that. And if I find it's too light, I can darken it down. It's not a problem. But I love the way these textures happen. And this is very random. So I'm not really trying to follow the reference too much here. I'm trying to make a painting, right? Not a photo. That's the deal. I'm going to go back into this area. It gets a, a little more yellow through here. And eventually I want to kind of get rid of the lines that I see and edges become more transitional. I 
Okay. I want to bring a little more attention to this area. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more chroma, a little more intensity of color through here. And I'm going to grab my palette knife again and pick up some more of the color that I had here and pull the eye over this way. Uh, the th good thing about choosing a subject like this is everything is crooked, so it kind of looks right when you're trying to do something that is really very precise and, you know, super architectural, well, you can't be this loose with it. So this is, this is a subject that you can paint the spirit of, if that makes any sense. You don't actually have to paint exactly what's in front of you. You paint the idea of what's in front of you. I'm getting a little more paint going here, a little more texture. Everything is quite textured in this. If you saw the painting I did of the Venice Canal, um, it's kind of the same sort of feeling where you're getting these textures working. And again, you know, okay, there's some drawing issues here. Let's deal with some of that. Um, sometimes when I watch someone else painting, I think, you know, can they see that, that that's not right? Like it's crooked or perspective's wrong or whatever. Um, but, you know, they're looking at other areas, right? So they're trying to solve other parts of the picture. You can't, it's hard to painting a, paint a painting all at the same time and make it look right. But in a perfect world, that's kind of our goal. So thinking about all the elements as you go to try and keep it cohesive and keep it working. And I need to be careful that I get my perspective working properly. That's important because if one thing's not right, like for sure, someone looks at it and says, you know what, like, that's not right. So if I look at it, it's not right. I'm not happy. So if your audience thinks there's something that's not working, then, you know, they're going to walk away. Okay. I just want to make sure that this sink is feeling like it belongs in this space. It's definitely more narrow towards the end. So this is kind of fun. I'm going to redraw some stuff here. So this is the great thing about oil. You know, I can take this right now and I'm just going to do this. And I want to make sure it's right, right? So let's just get rid of this stuff that's not working. Already it's better. <laughs> it looks like a monster hanging on the wall. It could be part of a stable. It's true. Okay. Just going to scrub that out and get the shapes around it working better, if I can. Use a palette knife. And let that be the edge there. And over here, I want to make sure I get this angle right. I'm going to draw it in this way so I can see it. And I'm going to try and create this perspective that comes out here. And this may be a little more dramatic than it really is, but if it looks right, it's okay to leave it, right?
Okay. It's a little better, I think. And if it's not, you just go back and fix it again. So that's how it works. I'm, go I'm gonna definitely make this more dramatic than it really is in the photo. It's almost a little distorted, if I can say that. Kind of like the way the green's coming through that. It's interesting. You don't see that much in real life, but it makes for a more interesting image. I'm gonna soften this down here. And here too. And I need to bring a little bit of light this, by the way, right here is not that light, so I'm going to knock that down. It's easy enough to do. Just bring some dirty paint over top of it. Okay. And this area right here in the front of it, I'm going to bring in just a hint of light. It comes up in here. It's probably too much light. Okay. All right, I'll leave it for now. Then I want to go into the darks on this side here. I like the greens that come through, but it's a little too much, honestly. So, oh, I just took paint away instead of putting it down. So it's important to have a brush that's loaded with paint. If you want to get something to work, you have to use paint. You can see I'm pushing the brush down. It leaves a different edge. It leaves a softer edge. And uh, that's a nice way to control your edges. Keep that edge a little softer. And I'll go in with something a little sharper because in the photo that I'm working from, uh, I need to make sure that I accentuate the shapes that are strong, that are right. Um, okay. So yeah, Jerry, I do think of vanishing points a bit, for sure. Um, something that, you know, you can really measure it out if you want to. At this stage, I'm sort of doing it intuitively. Uh, I can go back in and correct things later if I want to. And, you know, literally, even after it's dry, you can do that. You can go and paint over the right perspective if you need to. But more than anything right now, I'm interested in the, the mood of this. I want to get that working. And you can go back and correct your drawing here and there where you need to. Um, but the the feeling of the painting is what interests me at this stage. I'm thinking about peripheral and I'm thinking about, you know, colors and how I feel when I look at this. And it's okay if it's a little crooked and, you know, because this place is. So I picked an easier subject in a way um, for doing this today. Okay, now, one thing I notice when I look at this is uh, when I drew this sink in, this here is too far over. So I'm just going to go back into this and pull it out of the way. Just move it back a little bit so it lines up better. All right. And already that looks better. Okay. Um, I'd like to bring a little bit more color into the shadows right now. It's important to keep your eye moving around the painting uh, and look at the things that are working and aren't and look at the sort of colors 
um, that are happening that work and those that are not working and just continually keep your eyes moving around it. Uh, it's also really important to get back from your work because when you, when you do that, you see the larger shapes better. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of a, this is actually ultramarine blue into the shadows. And I want to create the sense of something going on down in here. And this is where, you know, some of the stuff is really intuitive. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to explain intuitive. If you look at an area and it feels kind of dull, then you can go into it and, and add something to it. But what you don't want to do is have an area become more important than the focal area. And in this case, the sink is a focal area, right? So I want to make sure I don't get too much attention in the shadows, but I just feel like the shadows need a little more of something. So I'm bringing some violets and blues into this. Um, and it just gives a little more life to that area. Makes us want to believe that there's some kind of atmosphere there. Um, someone said one time, a long time ago, um, if there's a way that you can paint the air, then you're onto something. Uh, just a sense of, of what may be in the shadows without really defining anything. It's, it just makes for a more interesting painting. And it's something we can do uh, as painters. We don't need Photoshop. A good Photoshop artist can do this kind of stuff too, of course. I'm just going to soften that down. I'm just running the palette knife up and down, just softening those edges where it transitions at the corner. And I can go back and pick up a little bit of the old paint that was there, take that over top. And a lot of this is intuitive also. So bringing a little more color into this area right here and also reducing the value so that there's more contrast. I'm going to go back into the lighter part of, let's just see what this looks like. I'm curious. Just to lighten that a little bit. And you can see I'm just, I'm looking at big shapes here. I'm, I'm really still thinking about the large shapes. That's what I really want to do. Zeus, this painting feels like sadness, grief, and poverty. Love it. Okay, that makes me feel good. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> I, li I like that. It's sort of, you know, if you... If you get a feeling from a painting, that's that's a great thing. Wow, I'm I'm really happy when that happens. It's when you look at a painting, you say, ah, you know what? Like I've seen a thousand beautiful, pretty things from you know lots of different painters, and I do love pretty things. I love you know nice scenes, but there's something beautiful about the old and decaying and you know, broken down and, and run down. And it has the, the story of years, and yet it somehow or other still survived. So uh, life isn't always fresh and clean and wonderful. That's for sure. Okay, I'm just taking a dry brush, and I'm going to soften out some of these edges here in the window, but leave the texture. I want to keep a little bit of that texture going. All right. Now, this area here, when I look at it, it's a little bit too light. So I'm going to go back into that with a little more ochre and just knock it down a touch. You can have a few little light spots 
peeking through, but I just want to keep that, keep it down so it's not getting as much attention because this is the area and this is the area that really needs to be sort of in the limelight. I like when that kind of thing happens where it's just, you know, the palette knife has its own magic for sure. I'm going to go into this light color here that's in the window and just throw some of that in here so that it finds its way back towards the source, the light source. It's not white, as I pointed out before. It's almost white, but it's not white. I'm going to take that same color and drop it right in here. And I need a good, strong edge that works on this kind of horizontal plane right here. OK. Someone could write a dark story around this. There was a studio that I rented for a short while when I was putting together a show, and um, it was an artist studio that a lot of different artists used. And um, there was a, I did a, I put a photo on Facebook of this at one point, and it had a little sign written literally on the wall that said, please keep clean. That's what it said right above the sink. But everything you looked at was absolutely filthy, dirty. It was absolutely disgusting. And uh, I just found it really amusing that people didn't pay much attention to that sign. But it looked like an artist studio. I'm just bringing some grays into here and sort of some green grays and a few more yellows just to add a little more variety in this area. And that's getting the right muddy, mucky. This is a case where you can actually have like a muddy painting and it still works. And again, using those textures as much as I can to help create the feeling, the sense of the light that's happening in here. All right, now in the center of this sink, it gets a little warmer and darker in color. So I'm gonna try and bring some of that into it. You'll notice I haven't gone for my like darkest darks. I'm reserving those if I need them uh, for the end. And the lightest lights too, you typically you reserve those things for the end where you need those accents. If you read about John Singer Sargent, he would work from the middle values out and reserve the darkest darks and the lightest lights for the end. And there's a lot to be learned by looking at Sargent's work for sure, um, because his values are extraordinary. He just really had such a fine sense of light and shadow and where things should go. Now there's too much definition back in here because of what I just put in. So I'm going to go back into the darks that I have and just soften that down so that there's a bit of a an edge that softens into the shadows. I want to get a sense of the depth of this. Just kind of tickling these colors in here. But it gets lighter towards that edge. So 
also gets a little bit warmer towards this edge here. So I'm just going to put a little bit more warmth than that. And pushing back and forth between colors. So I'm going to go back in with that dark. And it's kind of a who knows what's in that sink. Who wants to know what was in that sink? Now you can see these kind of things here that happen when you have paint underneath uh, picks up on those edges um, and it adds a little bit of interest to what would normally kind of boring areas, honestly. Uh, now, my gut is telling me again that I want to bring a little more color into an area um, in that porcelain behind the sink. And my feeling is... I don't know why. It just sort of feels like it could use a little bit of violet. So I'm going to do that. A very light violet. There's so many yellows going on in here. If you have an opportunity to work with complement colors in a painting, sometimes that can really work. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll give it a try. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Angelica. I don't know if you uh, wanted to wash your hands in this sink, but if if you do, well, you might come up with some nice color. <laughs> okay, I'm just throwing in some violets here, which just brings a little more life into the light area here. Again, I'm not sure if it's right. I'm going to bring some... A uh, lighter, warmer color against that so that we have a mix of the yellows, the violets together. And again, if I don't like it, I can always change it. I don't mind it. This sort of that intensity of color towards the sink that more chroma is helping bring the eye down to this focal area. And what's missing on this is a good strong shadow shape off that edge. But before I do that, I'm going to put in a little bit of light here just to define that a little more. When you put enough paint down in other parts of the painting, you can pick it up and use it in other places, right? So don't be afraid of using too much paint because you can always go back and use it in other parts or you can scrape it out if you don't like it. So just something to think about. We tend to not use enough paint. Um, I don't know why. It's just, well, it's expensive. And so, you know, we're, we're careful with it. But it's the paint that we want to see on the surface and the textures that make a painting more interesting. Okay. I'm getting more colorful on this than I really want to, honestly. Uh, and when I look at this violet, it's bothering me because it is so colorful and it's a dirty scene, you know. So I'm going to just do this. And sometimes this works too, by the way. You put color down and you just scrape it away. And it just leaves the remnants of something there, just like in real life. Uh, the remnants of the past. It was a little too strong before. Okay. Okay. Now, in the window area, there's a little more chroma, and I'm going to just hit it up there with a little bit more intensity and bringing some alizarin crimson 
which is a cool red. Um, and again, I, I don't want to sort of succumb to the temptation of getting too much color going, but sometimes it, again, it feels like you need to have a little more life in a certain area. And this is one way of getting it there. And I'm not being completely true to the subject. It looks different than my reference, but I'm making it my own painting. And that's something that you want to do. Make it your own painting. Don't be a slave to your reference. That's usually a bad idea. If you're trying to copy everything like a photo, well, then get your camera out, right? Take a photo. Try and make a painting when you're making a painting. I want to get a sense of light coming from here. A little bit of detail. Okay, now I want to kind of grunge up a few areas here. There's such a thing. I'm going to go back into sort of a gray, and I'm going to grab some fresh viridian and bring that into some of the gray areas. So I'm just going to squeeze a bit of that out. Feel free to ask questions if you have any. I'm happy to answer. At least about painting. <laughs> I'm not even sure I can answer about painting. I'm still learning as I go. There's so much to learn. So, But if I can't answer, I will. So I want to bring some of this green into this area here and define these areas a little more. I kind of like the way that green works now. Um, I, Rhonda, um, I have, uh, well, I've talked about it in past uh, live streams. Uh, what I do is I just take a palette knife and scrape off whatever is left on my uh, palette and I put it onto fresh boards so that the fresh boards end up being all covered with old paint. And that way I'm not wasting paint because I end up using it later underneath for the underpainting. And um, it, I just do it in a random way. I really don't think about the colors that are going down much. And it's sort of like, like an abstract, I guess, when, when I'm done. And there's no rhyme or reason to how it goes down. Sometimes if I have, like if I'm working on a painting that has a very specific color feeling, and I've got a lot of color harmony going on, um, I'll tone a canvas ahead of time and think, well, you know, maybe I can use like an overall blue color um, somewhere uh, or overall green or whatever. So sometimes I'll, I'll do that sort of thing. But um, for the most part, it's really honestly random. And um, I'll keep several of these in the studio all around. And if something looks like it might work for a subject, then I, that's the one that I grab and I pick that up and paint with it. So... Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay, I'm just going into a few little zones here. There's some nice transitions of colors that happen. And when you put this down with a palette knife, it really creates its own textures against this painted background. And I really do love how that feels. I can go in and drop 
certain colors that need to be the right value, but but they feel right with the painting. So, um, you know, feel right with the painting. It sounds kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'm looking at the overall painting as I go, continually looking overall and trying to figure out where things work and they don't. And really, again, from the beginning of this, it was looking at big shapes, right? So I want to keep that big shape in mind. I don't want to lose it, but I've softened it down an awful lot in these areas, these halftone areas where things go into the shadows. And, um, you know, you really can... I could play with this for, like, days. And the, the thing is that you don't want to. You want to try and keep it fresh because... Um, it feels more spontaneous and more honest. And it is more honest and more spontaneous. When you just keep it fresh, you put it down, leave it alone. Don't fuss about it for a long time. Just, you know, get on with it and allow the good energy that's gone into it to, to stay on the surface. Don't bury your good energy. If you've put some brush strokes down that really work, well, leave it alone. You know, just, it's okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to go into this area and just darken this down a little more. It's going to make that light feel lighter. It's going to be a little bit more dramatic and feel like that dirty old sink. It's better. I've left the textures there so we can see into the shadow a little bit. I'm going to go into this area over here and pull up just a little more chroma, a little more light as it goes back this way. I want to soften this shadow here as it comes out. You know, when I look at that, I realize that's just too strong. There, let's let that happen there. Okay. I still haven't created my shadow for here. So let's see if I can do that. Um, there are a few different ways to do that, but I'm just going to try and do it with a palette knife, see what happens. Just carefully drop it down, draw it across. And, you know, if I've gone over the edge like that, that's okay. Just pick up some paint from over here and squeeze it back in. There we go. That's just like that. Um, this is a little too wide there. So I'm going to pick some paint up from over here because I put lots down. And I'm going to roll the palette knife towards this and just squeeze it back in. Maybe I squeeze that too much. I don't know. Anyhow. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring a little more of that green gray as it goes into the shadow. Maybe a blue green in one area here. I just feel like it might work. That's a little strong in color, but I can just go through that with a palette knife and muck it up, and then it feels better. Okay, now I need to get my values working in this corner over here better. And it's kind of a, you know, a cooler green color, and now I'm just you know, my palette's starting to look really mucky, which is great because I can go into those mucky colors and make this, take these kind of colors and make them work. There are a couple of different ways of going towards um, creating a mood with color in your painting. One of those ways is to start with really muted neutral colors and build them 
towards more chroma or more intensity. The other way is to start with intense colors and then mute them by bringing muckier colors into it as you go. And both ways are okay. Like either way is fine, whatever works for you. Um, I don't have a set way of doing this, honestly. I recently tended to mix, pre-mix my colors so that I have a feeling of harmony in the work. Um, but again, there's no like super set rule in this. So if you like to paint intuitively, I know Stefan does. We talked about it earlier. Um, and if you know how to get to the colors you want, uh, then you can do that as you're painting, that's fine. Um, if it's a painting that's really complex and you want to make sure that you've got the right colors happening, then maybe you want to think about pre-mixing your colors ahead of time. It's just really, again, it's a personal thing. So there's some stains against the wall here that I see and I just put in a bit of dark and I'm going to go back in with a bit of yellow and go up against the edge of that and soften it down. So it feels like, well, it's been there for a long time. Those kinds of textures really add something where there's nothing. I'm going to do that on this corner of the sink here as well. And just let the palette knife do its thing. Okay, so when I squint at this now overall, it's getting pretty close to what I want. Um, I need a couple of little details now to have a better sense of what's happening. So I'm going to go in here. And again, the palette knife is great for this sort of thing. You can create nice detail with it. I'm dipping my palette knife into a combination of linseed oil and uh, thinner and I just need a tiny little bit of detail in these areas. I'm just counting down my squares behind the sink. One, two, three, four, five. Um, okay. Let's see what happens here. Just taking the edge of my palette knife, bringing this down. Doesn't matter if it's not straight. Really, it doesn't. So one, two, and three, four, five. There's some real perspective on this. So one, two, three. Okay, I might have missed my mark there. Really kind of got the perspective wrong. It's okay. I'm going to resolve that by changing the outside edge over here just a little. Okay, that's too strong a line, of course, but I can do the same thing I did before. I take some of the paint that's over here and squeeze it up against that and thin it down. And it's a little strong, it's a little too dark. So again, soften edges up, take the paint that's around and just move it 
into the edge. There we go. Feels a little better. Now I need to put in a little detail in the tile area again. I want to bring, this is where I want to try and get my perspective right. So just carefully place that, draw it back. I really do need more paint on my palette knife to make this work. So. There are times when you need to be careful and times when you can just play. So this is a time when I sort of need to be a little more careful to make this work. I find myself holding my breath. That's not usually a good sign. You want to stay relaxed when you do these things. Okay, and you can see that little area that I kind of made a mucky mess. I can just go in with my palette knife. Just pull up, because I've got paint underneath. I can pull that paint up and just lift that off, soften it down. And that's so crisp right there. I don't really care for it, don't like it. So um, if these edges are taking away from the focal area over here, then, you know, that's a problem. So I really want to be looking at this. So you can take a brush and just run it along. And take away the stuff that's too noisy. And it's trying to get too much attention, even in here. This is a soft, clean brush. And that takes it away from it being so obvious. Okay. Now. Yeah. I want to bring a little more of that sort of bluey green down in here. I have a bit there. And I think I can use a little over here. So we get that sense of the light coming and breaking up into this area. OK, now I want to take a minute and look at this thing overall and just say, you know, is there anything here that, like I, you know, when I look at it, when I get back from it, um, are there things that are just too strong, you know? And I look at this area, for example, now that I look at it, I find it detracts a little. It's nice to have things happening in the shadow, but maybe that's too much. I just really want to keep the eye coming to this area. So I'm going to just go into this and I need to make it darker. I'm even going to bring in a bit of that phthalo blue. Believe it or not, Stefan's still here. He'll be proud of me. And I'm even going to bring in a bit of alizarin. Again, there's color in this. And I'm going to keep it thin. It's a combination of phthalo and alizarin. And I just want to knock that down. That's okay to do that. If there are edges that are getting too much attention, then I really want to look at those. This is the time. Or if I need to bring more attention to certain images, this is when you can do the stuff that kind of finishes it up. I want to have it dark over here because there's not a lot going on over there. Um, so 
but I can still have some active brushwork. That's okay. But I don't want it to be so busy that, hey, you know, you don't want someone to come up to your painting and say, wow, like the subject's interesting, but the shadows are really more interesting than anything else. You want, you want to be able to control in a way what people look at, if that's possible. And the more texture there is, the more we look to that. Uh, the less texture, the less we look at it. The darker it is, the less we look at it. The lighter it is, the more we look at it because our eyes are drawn to light. That's just how it works. Okay. Now, the little thing you see right here is just a reflection. So, you know, I can cover that five times and it'll still be a reflection because it's, it's 3D right there. And that's the thing. When you look at a painting like this on a screen like this, uh, it's very different than from what it looks like in real life. And hopefully in real life, it just looks a lot better because you can really see the textures in, in real light. So um, this is a time where I want to look at, you know, edges here and there and just bring up a little bit more where I need to. I'm going to, I'm going to strengthen this area right here just a little. This is a very dark, dark right there. It's closer to the focal area, so I can do that. The edges closer to the focal point tend to be a little sharper, and that's because it's closer to the focal point. So that's just something to keep in mind. You can afford to soften your edges as they come away from the focal point. That area can have some detail because it's close to the sink. Okay. Those little lines right there, they're not needed. And I can go into that little bit right there because I really want it to disappear. Just using the edge of my palette knife or the point of my palette knife to soften things down. You can't, you normally don't think of doing that, but um, the edge of your palette knife is, is a great tool because you can get real control with just that the tip of the palette knife. Sometimes the brush doesn't work for you. So this is a case where the palette knife can. I'm going to just pull that over a little more. It's a crooked old sink. Everything's crooked in this thing, in this painting. But that's the kind of thing it is. Um, I want to bring more gray uh, into the background behind here. It's just getting too much attention. So I'm going to bring in kind of a yellow gray and just knock it back a little more because this for me is working nicely, but that's getting too much attention still because there's too much chroma. There's too much color in it. So I'm going to go over that with a gray um, and just tone it back. I'm hoping that that will make the difference. I can always lighten it if I need to. I can go back and add in more color. But I don't want this to be getting more attention than the sink. So, you know, if in doubt, gray it down. Oh, that's way better. Look at that. What a difference that makes. Holy smokes. Um, for any of you who are watching who, you know, haven't used a palette knife or you don't use it much, um, play with it. It's such a fun tool. And, you know, you get lots of paint down. When you see the original um, has texture that's interesting, uh, it's, it's kind of becoming my go-to tool. Like, I honestly now use it more than I use my brush. I tend to use the knife and then use the brush to soften things off later if I need to. Now, this is, in the original, there's a fair bit of light over here. So this is a, a case where I, I want to bring the eye to this area right here. So I'm going to take the light 
down. I'm just taking a soft brush here and just softening edges, knocking the values down so that the eye is drawn more to this area. And these are things that you can do to control where the viewer's eye goes. I want the mood to come to here. And sometimes going over a painting at the end, you soften your edges away from the focal area. That's really a, a good thing. And again, I, I'm using, I'm going over all these different colors and letting the colors pick up in the brush and find their way into the colors that surround each color, if that makes any sense. And just that kind of subtlety makes it feel like, wow, you know, kind of has almost, almost hate to say it, but like a photographic feel without it being a photo. Um, that whole area softened down when I did that. And I can do that up here a little, just going to let the light pl play through this area and here as well. So when you have an area like this, I don't remember who it was I was listening to. It was a, an artist talk, but it's this idea of having gateways. So entrance area. So we have something like this where there's a lot of light here. It's spilling into this scene. You can create edges like this that allow that light into the scene. It's just a bit of broken color, but it allows an entry into the rest of the painting. It creates a mood. And it really, if there's atmosphere, it really does happen that way. So um, entry areas, entry points, little gateways, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little more light detail on the top of this porcelain. And that gives it a little bit of a, an edge there, because there is an edge. It's a little too crisp for my liking, but it's okay. We'll just tickle that in there. And I feel like the area in here needs a little more warmth. I'm actually going to take a lizard and crimson and I'm going to bring in a bit of yellow ochre and I just want to warm that area up a little bit. So I'm going to drop some color in there and then go back in with a brush and just gently soften that so that it feels like there's something in that sink that maybe you don't want to touch, but it's there. I wish you could see the real color because it really, I'm looking at it on the screen and it really looks very different. Okay. Where are we? 340. All right. Wow. The time really went. Um, I'm going to share the screen again with the, um, the original image. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, no, not that way, not that way. There we are. Okay. So you can see what I've done with this um, compared to the original. And you can see I haven't followed the original completely. Uh, there are a lot of differences. Uh, one thing when I look at it side by side right now is this color right here is too strong. So I'm just going to pull that out of there. So it's less intense. I think what I had is I had it a little too light. And I'm just going to take that down because I think it's just a little too strong. And just doing that helps a bit. Um, and the other thing I want to do when I look at it at this size is I want to bring the eye down from here. So I'm going to go into that lighter green that I had. I'm going to lighten that, just bring it down this way, and I'll soften that in. Hey, Notes, thank you. Nice to see you're still here. 
Aren't you supposed to be sleeping or something? Getting well. <laughs> Stefan's been really nice. He hasn't, you know, written any horrible comments and or made too much fun of me. Now, Stefan would have finished like four of these paintings in the time it's taken me to do this. So he's very inspiring, I have to say. A little softer there. Okay. Um, okay, I think I'm going to kind of call it there. I may look at this a little later and do a few little touch-ups, but I hate getting too pernickety, too fussy about these things, because when you do, you start spoiling the freshness of it. And to keep a painting fresh and alive is really... Um, it's a challenge and, you know, just fiddling can totally ruin a painting. There's always something we can fiddle at, right? So um, be careful about that. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. And it's really uh, been fun. I, I've enjoyed doing this. I'm glad I didn't pick a really complicated subject. Um, but, you know, it's just evidence that you don't have to have a super complex subject to paint. Uh, you can learn so much by doing something that is simple, that forces you to focus on textures and values and so on. Um, thanks, Stefan. Thanks. Uh, again, the structures were fun to work with. Um, Jerry, thank you. And Sasha, thanks again. <laughs> um, you're the charmer, Newts. It's great, great that you were able to tune in. Um, hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, please, um, Pat, let me come back to you guys and actually talk to you face to face. That would be nice. Uh, hang on, front camera. Oh, actually, before I, before I do that, sorry, I want to go full screen with this and just show this solo layout so you can see that thing completely. Now, um, that's how it looks. So, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm not going to fool with that a whole lot more, but there you can see it completely. All right, so I'm going to come back to you. Um, and I can say a proper goodbye. Okay, there we are. Um, thanks a bunch for checking in. Really appreciate that you uh, showed up today. Um, and um, uh, really, really enjoy doing this because it, it forces me to do something every week and make me think about what I'm doing. And, you know, while I'm talking and painting away, it, it makes me articulate uh, how I'm thinking, what I'm doing, and I'm hoping that it's helpful for you guys. Um, if, uh, if you liked what you saw today, please um, give me a thumbs up. Stefan's mentioned it. Thanks. Uh, and um, uh, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please subscribe because um, there is a surprise coming. Uh, for those of you who subscribe, anyone who has subscribed, there is something that's coming in the future. And um, I'll let you know um, that makes you come back again, I hope. Uh, please, you know, send the link to your friends if you think they'd be interested. And um, uh, there are a lot of people who can't afford to take art classes. And this is a way that at least they have an opportunity to, you know, see what a painter does. And there are lots of great videos and so on on YouTube out there. There's lots to learn this way. I continually watch videos and see how other artists work because I'm curious. Um, but um, um, I, I really appreciate, you know, my, my uh, subscription has gone, the subscriptions have gone up a lot. I think like it's over 300 and it's not like in the thousands yet, but it doesn't matter if you're enjoying, I'm happy. Um, if anyone's interested, they want to take private lessons, they can. I actually 
you know, teach privately and I, in small groups. And I also work with the Avenue Road Art School in Toronto. Uh, they're still taking bookings for the three courses that I'm teaching this next term. Um, teaching uh, drawing portraits with a pencil or pencil portraits. Uh, I'm teaching independent studies, which means you can paint whatever you want and help you with that. And um, I'm teaching a color course as well. So I don't know anything about color, but I'm teaching a color course. So I'm, I teach it my way. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate and hope you've enjoyed this and um, pass it on to others. And please stay safe. Um, it's uh, a crazy time out there. So stay safe, stay healthy. Um, and I'll see you next Friday. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.